Have you heard expectant watchfulness? In this lesson, we will learn God redeems us. Happy Sunday. Are you missing your Sunday school? Would you like to be part of our Sunday school? Then subscribe. Hi, I'm Regina Dean Reed, and I teach Sunday school at Antioch Missionary Baptist Church in Maven, Mississippi. Now, let's get into this lesson. And today's lesson is expectant watchfulness. Devotional reading is Matthew 25th chapter. Verses 1 through 13. Background scripture, Psalms 130. Key verse is Psalms 130, verse 7. And today's date is July 28, 2024. Let's start with a prayer. O oh God, who hears the cries of broken people and sees our tear stained faces, who sutures broken hearts and shattered relationships. Hear every cry from the depths of us as well. Do not forget us in our day of distress and help us not forget to be thankful when you have rescued us with one of the many methods at your disposal. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Lesson aims. One, identify elements of cause and effect in the text. Two, define the genre of lament using Psalms 130 as an example. And three, personalize in writing one of the verses without changing the psalm's original intent. Lesson introduction. Psalms 130 is a brief yet powerful prayer that delves into the depth of human struggles and the hope of redemption. It emphasizes the internal battle against sin rather than external threats. The solution to this problem lies in acknowledging our faults and seeking forgiveness together as a community. This sense of unity in sin and forgiveness is a key theme in this Psalms and throughout the Bible. Lesson context. Psalms 130 is part of a group of songs called the Psalms of Accents, sung by pilgrims on their way to the Jerusalem temple after the Babylonian exile. These Psalms express a range of emotions and allows worshipers to bring their lives to God. Psalms 130 moves from despair to confidence in God's saving work, showing a shift from personal suffering to hope for all. It begins with a cry for help and ends with praise, reflecting a condensed lament within a larger group of psalms that position the worshiper in the right spirit stance before God. Listen to scriptures. Psalms 130, verse 1. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. The phrase out of the depths refers to deep water. Ezekiel 27, 24, Psalm 69, 2, and 14. Isaiah 51 and 10 also talks about the depths of the sea. Depth often symbolizes danger or chaos, like drowning. Exodus 15 and 5. Psalm 692, Sheol is a place distant from God, not hell. Numbers 16, 30 through 33, and Psalm 6, 6 and 5. The cry from Seal's gates shows human struggles with mortality and sickness. The psalmist asks for God's help in times of trouble. Psalms 49 and 15, verse 2. Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. The Lord is asked to listen attentively to the psalmist's voice, showing care by addressing specific concerns. The psalmist believes God will respond with compassion, even if the timing is not immediate. Verse 3, If thou, Lord, shouldest mark an iniquity, O Lord, who shall stand? The psalmist wonders about God's mercy, saving that if he look at human sin, no one would be seen as good. Punishing every mistake too harshly would make it hard for people to survive, but ignoring wrongdoing would hurt humanity. The God of Israel helped people find a better way. The psalmist wants forgiveness and change from God who enjoys fixing lives. Asking for mercy means wanting to improve. Verse 4, But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. This verse links to verse 3, revealing a sequence of connected events. Feeling God's forgiveness 
can amaze people and change their lives. The psalmist clearly grasped God's mercy. Forgiveness may initially seem surprising in its ability to inspire awe instead of fear through punishment. God's mercy encourages sinners to respect him. Forgiveness offers new opportunities rather than trapping us in our errors. God's gentle manner contrasts with human harshness toward each other. Verse 5, I wait for the Lord, my soul doeth wait, and in his word do I hope. The Hebrew view of the soul is deeper than in English. Ancient Israelites believed in a unified body and soul, not separate. The soul gave life to the body. Christianity also stresses this unity, emphasizing bodily resurrection over just the soul's immortality. When the psalmist says, my soul waits, it shows eager anticipation for God's saving work with their whole being. Hope is linked to waiting for God's promises which never fails. Trusting in God's salvation promise as Abraham did shapes a person's life and actions. Verse six, my soul waited for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. This verse is like a song that keeps repeating, capturing our intense anticipation for God's help. It's unclear if it refers to waiting at night or emphasizing the watchful sentinels. An analogy is drawn between night guards awaiting dawn and us waiting for God's intervention in a new day. The psalmist's faith relies on hope for God's future actions. Verse 7, let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him plenteous redemption. The psalm seemingly moves from individual to community, sharing hope in God's mercy for all. A rare Hebrew word, for redemption is used, but its common verb form assures accurate translation. The concept of redemption, once linked to freeing slaves, now represents liberation from sin. The psalm anticipates God's deliverance of Israel from sin's grasp as a promise to their forefathers is fulfilled. Verse 8, and he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. The psalm ends by showing strong faith in God highlighting his care for everyone. This trust in God's mercy brings hope to Israel and all. It may have inspired the idea of Jesus saving grace in Matthew chapter one, verse 21. Jesus represents God's redemption for all. Our own experiences connect with the message of the community. Just like Israel, we rejoice in being saved and strive for more. This also applies to the church. As part of Israel, we receive God's forgiveness personally. And as a group, showing it in how we treat others. Write your answers to these questions in the comments below. Question one, in what circumstances do you find yourself reaching out to God from the depths? Two, how well do you recognize your own faults on a scale from one to two? And three, how would you symbolize the sensation of relying on the Lord's timing? Conclusion. Psalms 130 highlights the importance of waiting for God's grace. It acknowledges the doubts and struggles that come with waiting for salvation, but also emphasizes that trust in God involves facing challenges. Despite hardships, faith in God is realistic and ultimately leads to grace. Waiting is a discipline that teaches us to live with God and others who are also seeking his help. The psalm reveals our deep need for God's presence and encourages us to seek him even in our darkest moments. Thought to remember, faith celebrates our hope in God's forgiveness and calls others to do the same. If you have enjoyed this lesson, give us a thumbs up, share this lesson, get into a Bible study group, whether in person or online, get your shots, stay six feet apart, wear your mask, love each other, pray for each other, and I will see you all next week.